Hi, Hi, Kitty Wink Wink listeners. listeners. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Juliana. Glad you're all here for story time. Okay, open-hearted, playful, and intelligent listeners. This is episode number 11. This story highlights the number 11 and the letter K. Woohoo! Thanks for listening and being part of the Kitty Wink crew with us and our octopus pal, Ozzy. Are we ready to guess the animal in this story? Let's go. Here are the clues. Number one, this animal is native to Australia. Ooh, cool. Number two, they are gray and can have a little brown on them. That's Mm. not very helpful. Not that helpful. Three, some might think they are bears, but they are actually marsupials. Ooh, or soupials. Okay, but people think they're bears. Listeners, what do you think it is? Hmm. I'm thinking about the letter K. Is it a koala? It's a koala! Yay! Koalas, sometimes called koala bears, are not actually bears. Like the clues shared, they're marsupials that are native to Australia. Hmm. So interesting. I really thought they were bears. <laughs> These furry beauties can sleep up to... 18 to 20 hours a day. And I cannot wait to share more about a very special koala named Kayla. It's time to use our ears and our minds while we listen and see if we can find where the number 11 and the letter K shows up. We'll chat more about the story at the end with our Kitty Wink guest, so stick around. I can't wait to learn more about Kayla the koala. Enjoy a Kitty Wink story from us. It's time to listen. And then we'll discuss. Yahoo! Let's go! This is a story that starts on the first day of the 11th month of the year. Do you happen to know what month the 11th month is, Lindsay? I sure do. Mm. I wonder if the Kittywinks know which month it is, too. Here's a hint, Kittywinks. This month starts with the letter N. It's November. Yay, yes, November, which is the 11th or second to last month of the year. That's the month my story takes place. A few years back on the 1st of November, there was a zoo in Australia that celebrated the birthday of one of their cozy cutie pie koalas. Her name was Kayla, and she was turning four. Kayla loved to celebrate others, but wasn't always comfortable being celebrated herself. Don't get me wrong, she appreciated all the well wishes from the zookeepers, visitors, and other koalas, but she was much more comfortable focusing her energy on others. In fact, she was known to the other koalas in the zoo as the go-to koala if anyone needed to talk through something, have a good cry, a good laugh, a hug, or any kind of help in general. Kayla was kind. It seems like it. Yeah. If she could... She would do anything for her fellow koalas or any animal who needed a helping paw. This rang true on her birthday as well, because Kayla's fourth birthday was also the day another koala joined her zoo family. Mm, Fine. Kayla was just waking up from her mid-morning nap when her favorite zookeepers, Henry and Eddie, stopped by to wish her a very happy birthday, give her some extra juicy eucalyptus leaves, and round up the others for an announcement. We will be welcoming a new koala today, everybody. She is young, probably around one, and she is new to life in a zoo. Please welcome her in and help us make her feel at home, said Eddie. I'll go get her right now and we'll be back in about ten minutes. While Eddie went to collect the new addition... Henry stayed to feed the other koalas and share a bit more about the newbie. He told them that the new koala's name was Kate, and she was found all alone in the middle of bustling downtown Sydney. Oh, that must have been scary for her. Kate was saved by a good Samaritan, or a very kind person, and brought to the zoo to find a safe place to call home. Sydney is a big Australian city and pretty far away from the eucalyptus forest koalas usually live in. Yeah. I bet Kate the koala was pretty scared. Cars, trains, and buses galore make cities dangerous for most animals. You're right. Koalas are native to Australia and do live in eucalyptus trees. 
not in a condo in downtown well, Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad she was out of the city too. Kate was so young and alone. Being with other koalas was a lot safer for her. Kayla was especially excited for Kate to arrive and was on the lookout for Eddie. Where could he be? It's been 11 minutes already and he said he would be back in 10. Just then, Eddie walked through the door with Kate in hand. Kayla and the others slowly approached her. But the closer they came, the more Kate hid in Eddie's arms. By the time they circled around the zookeepers, all they could see of Kate was her little butt popping up. <laughs> oh, it's all right, little one. These are your new friends, and this is your new home. Don't be shy. Oh, Eddie, doesn't he know that feeling shy is perfectly normal? When people are shy, they may come off as cautious and reserved, but that doesn't mean that's the way they always are. It's so true. Sometimes we shall feel shy because we're in a new space or meeting new people. Yeah, or being the center of attention. Yeah. I'm sure Eddie was just trying to help Kate feel comfortable, but calling a shy person out can make them feel even worse. Kayla remembered how hard it was when she first came to the zoo. She remembered feeling intimidated. Kayla was shy, too, at first. This gave her an idea of how to show kindness to Kate. Using her past experience to guide her, she asked the other koalas to go back to their trees and take a nice long nap. So Kate didn't feel extra pressure knowing how many eyes were looking at her. Luckily, koalas love to sleep and had no problem with this new plan. Yeah, we learned earlier that they can sleep up to 20 hours a day. Crazy. That would leave only four hours for them to be awake in the day. Now that's what I call a sleepyhead. No kidding. Henry helped Eddie tuck Kate onto a branch right where it forked out from the tree. At first, she didn't want to let go of Eddie's arm. But with a lot of patience and some gentle encouragement, Kate grabbed onto the branch, wrapping her little arms around the base of the tree. Once the zookeepers were sure she was nice and snug, they said their goodbyes. Henry gave Kate a nice pat on the head, and Eddie said, Goodbye, mate. Hope you like your new home. And Kayla, happy birthday again, and thanks for watching over the little one. Kayla introduced herself to Kate, but realized quickly Kate was in need of a nap as well. Kayla found the perfect branch to sleep on by Kate, and together they joined the rest of the koalas for a nice snooze. The sun said its goodbyes for the day, and the beautiful full moon rose to take its place. When the sun came back up in the morning, the koalas were just waking up, hungry and ready to chomp on some yummy eucalyptus leaves before their mid-morning nap rolled around. Kayla said good morning to Kate. And surprisingly, Kate said good morning back! Oh, yay! Yeah, just having Kayla next to her while they slept made Kate feel welcomed and comfortable. Oh, good. Kayla and Kate ate together and talked a bit about some of their favorite things. Kate and Kayla both enjoyed small eucalyptus leaves, and their favorite color was the same as well, silver gray, like their fur. This gave Kayla an idea. She asked Kate if she could gather the other koalas around for a share and tell. Each koala could share something special about themselves or something they really liked. Oh, that way Kate could get to know a little bit about everyone and maybe find some more similarities with the other koalas, just like she did with Kate. Exactly. Way to think like a kind koala, Lynn. <laughs> Kate liked Kayla's idea because she knew it would help her feel more at home. While Kayla left to round up the others, Kate started thinking about how Kayla's acts of kindness made her feel. Asking the other koalas to give her space... Staying close to her on her first night and opening up about herself made Kate feel seen and welcome. Kayla came back with the group, and one by one, they started to share something about themselves. When Kayla's turn came up, Kate spoke first. Kayla, I know you have something to share, but if I can, I want to share something about you. You are the kindest koala I've ever met, and your kindness made me feel included. It is something I will never forget. The next thing Kayla knew, each koala started sharing their own stories of when Kayla's kindness helped them 
or made them feel loved. Oh, Kayla must have loved hearing that. Well, happy tears started to roll down Kayla's furry face. This felt good. Really, really good. As much as she loved being kind to others, Kayla also realized receiving others' kindness felt great, too. To be kind is to love, and we all need love. And that's the end. Let's call a kitty wink. Hi, Kitty Wink. Can you introduce yourself? I am I am Henry. I'm four years old, and I love living in Australia. Hi, Henry. <laughs> it's so great to have you here. And what do you love about Australia? Everything. <laughs> right. Thanks for sharing and being part of the crew. Yes, we're yep. so glad you came on this week's journey with us. Can you tell us the, your favorite part of the story? Um, I like napping and quilts like napping. Wow, I like napping too. Henry, have you ever met a koala? Um, yep, at the zoos. At the zoo, because you're from Australia, and the koalas in the story are from Australia too. Yeah. Lindsay and I were talking, and we were talking about the names of the zookeepers in the story. What were their names? Henry and Eddie. Do you know an Eddie? I know Eddie. I am a brother called Eddie. Yeah, when we were writing the story, we were inspired by you and your brother, and we named the zookeepers after you and your brother. Henry, did you think that I had a good Australian accent? I tried hard. Yep. <laughs> Did it sound like I lived in Australia when I was talking like Eddie? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Henry, did you notice the letter K in the story? Yeah, koala. You betcha, koala. Anything else? Kate. Yeah, that was the name. Was there another koala? Kayla. Kate and Kayla. They were two girl koalas, right? And I in the story... It was kind of interesting because Kayla had been at the zoo for a while and Kate was new to the zoo. Have you ever been new? Have you ever been nervous to go somewhere for the first time? Yep. Yeah. What do you do when you're nervous? Go to mom or teacher if I'm at school. Yeah, go to someone that you trust. That's really, that's really great. It seems like Kate and Kayla became really close and trusted each other and were so kind to one another. Do you agree with that, Henry? Yeah. yeah. I'm friends with Patrick. Is Patrick your best friend? Yeah. And do you talk to him a lot about things? Yeah. Henry, do you want to say hi to Patrick? You can say hi, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Hopefully he listens to this and hears you say hi. Did you hear the number 11 come up anywhere? The 11th month. You're Do right. you remember what month that is? November. You betcha. November is the 11th month. Nice job. What about, I think there was a time when Eddie was gone for a little bit and he said he would be gone for 10 minutes. But how long was he gone for? 11. 11. Yeah. You're right. 11 minutes. And it felt Maybe like eaten by a crocodile. Oh. <laughs> well, let's hope not. In the zoo. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of fun animals in the zoo. What's your favorite animal to see in the zoo? Um, the crocodile. Ooh, the crocodile. Which sounds like crocodile croc. Sounds like a K, but it's actually a C. C word, right? Yeah. And what do you think Kate learned? Do you think Kate learned anything? She learned to open up to new friends. Yeah, that's a really good observation. She did learn to open up to new friends. Okay, before wrapping up, Henry, let's play a Would You Rather. All right. You already said your favorite animal was a crocodile, and you've been to a zoo in Australia, so maybe you've seen these two animals. Would you rather be a koala or a kangaroo? Ah, a kangaroo because I like hopping. We don't even have to say tell you why, because you already told us why you pick kangaroo. Thanks, Henry. I bet you're really great at hopping. Lindsay, what would you rather be? Oh, I think I would rather be a kangaroo, too. I also like hopping, and I like that you can 
that the mom kangaroos can hold their babies in their pouch. I think that would be really cool. (laughs) Super helpful. Those are all such great answers. And Kitty Wink listeners, I bet you had a great answer to that too. Henry, do you have a would you rather for us and our listeners? Would you rather be a dragon or a shark? A dragon or a a shark? Yeah. I think I would rather be a dragon because dragons fly and I would love to fly. And I also love s'mores and I would love to be able to blow hot fire out of my mouth and toast up my own marshmallows. Oh, wow. You kind of convinced me. I was going to say shark, but the whole marshmallow thing makes me rethink it. But I would maybe still say shark because I I think sharks are really scary. But maybe if I was a shark, I would realize they're not actually that scary. Henry, what about you? Which one would you pick? Um, a dragon, because if I had s'mores, they would be fairly um, yummy. Yeah, that's a great answer. I'm with you. I would like to eat s'mores all day. Thanks, Henry and listeners for tuning in to episode 11. And we can't wait to be with you again on another episode. Thanks, Henry. Bye. 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 That was so fun to be with all of you and have a conversation with our Kitty Wink guest, Henry. If you would like to be a Kitty Wink guest, please reach out. We would love to have you. Email us at contactkittywink at gmail.com and check out our Instagram page at kittywinkcrew. We would love to have artwork from our kitty wings to share as well. Can you draw two koalas maybe up in a tree? Please send it our way and we might just feature your artwork on our page. Thanks for letting us share what we love, stories. Please come back next week for a new podcast story adventure. We want to grow our community, so please show us some love by liking, subscribing, and reviewing. Yes, thank you. And remember to love yourself, others, and spread that love everywhere, even to Australia. Or as Ozzy would say, lead with your three hearts. Goodbye. Bye, mate. Go, Kiwake. Yay! Stories written and read by Juliana Bria and Lindsay Farley. Original theme by Miriam Mayer. Artwork by Amy Nicholson and Maggie Porter. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. This has been a Kitty Wing Crew production.